What, did you have a question? No, just tell them. Okay. Well, telling something is not a question. That's your opinion, and you're wrong on that. All right? Yes, ma'am. All right, well, ma'am, let, let me just explain something to you real quick. I know there's a lot of people that lie uh, to people about what my powers are. I mean, I'm the governor, right? I'm not a dictator. I was Secretary of State for nine years, and I can tell you every single day is serving as your governor. I have done exactly what I said I would do when I put my hand on the Bible and said I would follow the laws and the Constitution of this state and the Constitution of the United States. All the issues that you're talking about, you need to talk to the Secretary of State about that. So Brian Kemp is facing the consequences of his own actions. That was a video of a bunch of right-wingers completely disconnected from reality, thinking that Brian Kemp didn't do enough to make sure that Donald Trump actually won the election because the evil Democrats were out there stealing elections and he didn't do anything about it. And there's so much irony to this because let's talk about Brian Kemp for a second. Brian Kemp famously won election for governor after, while he was Secretary of State, purged hundreds of thousands of people from the voting rolls and over his span as Secretary of State I think purged about one and a half million people. Now, you could say, ah, oh, but it's just usual procedure, it's just no big deal, it's just, you know, people move and stuff like that. But, According to research done by Greg Pallast, who is a journalist into this type of thing, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that those voter purges were done in an incredibly biased way to stop poor people and people of color from being able to vote on election day. And while that is theoretically hard to prove, I mean, you could prove it with some sort of investigation, but guess who's the governor now? So that investigation, obviously, isn't really going to happen to the degree that it really should. We need to ask why Brian Kemp was allowed to do this in the first place. And the reason he was allowed to do this in the first place is because right-wingers in the United States have been pushing this idea that elections are these insecure things and there's all this fraud that's just rampant in our elections so we need to make it really really difficult to vote we need to have voter purges we need to have strict ID laws we need to do extra citizenship tests for voting all of these things under the guise of oh there's a lot of fake voters out there but I think we all really know when these Republicans are saying that there's fake voters, who they're really talking about. The reality is Republicans are upset that black folks are allowed to vote in the United States. Let's just be real and let's call it what it is. But so in this environment that he has created where people are constantly fear-mongering about theoretical fake voters, now he's facing the consequences of his own actions because the people who drank the Kool-Aid that he was serving a couple years ago have now maybe drank a little bit too much Kool-Aid. And they're at the point where they think that Brian Kemp is in on the conspiracy. And this is a that we're going to see across the country where any election that any Democrat wins, they're going to assume is rigged and, oh, there are all these fake voters. And any Republican that is in office during any of these elections, they're going to point to you and say, you must be part of the conspiracy too. And it's just absolutely clownish, but it is the direct results of the Republican party. Now, I also want to acknowledge something because the Democrats have a certain degree of culpability too. You see, journalists like Greg Pallast, for example, that have pointed out the very specific ways in which our electoral system is actually rigged in favor of the right, not in the form of fraudulent votes, but in the form of structures. The Democratic Party, by and large, has said, no, we can't acknowledge these systemic or structural problems with our electoral system because, oh, you know, that would give too much credit to the right-wing claims about voter fraud and stuff like that. But let's really focus on this. Let's think about this for a second. If these governors and secretaries of state around the country are allowed to purge people from the voter rolls with very little evidence, if, for example, we have very strict felony voting laws, as well as a war on drugs that criminalizes a huge chunk of the population, not to mention incredibly biased police forces around the country, all of those things add up together to marginalized communities facing incredibly difficult hurdles when it comes to actually trying to vote. All of this happens before election day, before any vote is cast. The system is rigged in terms of the way districts are drawn, in terms of the difficulties that are intentionally put in place in front of marginalized communities to pre prevent them from voting, and additionally in the form of voter purges that are very often done in incredibly biased and racist ways, all in an attempt to make sure that black folks in the United States are not allowed to get to the ballot box. And the Democratic Party does 
basically nothing about this. And the reason why the Democratic Party doesn't do anything about this is because they say they don't want to feed into Republican narratives about voter fraud. But the reality is, I'm going to make a claim here. I think that the Democratic Party wants to lose. The Democratic Party wants Republicans to continuously be in power because of exactly the criticism that Joe Biden is facing right now. Democrats have the majority in the House and Senate, and they have the presidency. And even amid all that, they are failing to pass even the most basic legislation. Democrats do not want to pass this legislation. They do not want to do anything materially that helps people. They want to run campaigns and make money off of running campaigns and keep those positions of power. All of the Democratic consultants that work for the Democratic Party and these candidates actually do a lot better financially when the Democrats are losing because they have an easier time raising money, fear-mongering about, oh, look at all the terrible things Republicans are doing. If you want to stop that, you've got to donate to my campaign. And that system creates a sick incentive for Democrats to always make sure that Republicans are doing as well as they can. So instead of actually structurally changing the systemic racism that we have in this country and the denial of access to the ballot box that poor people across the country regularly face, the Democratic Party pretends that everything is fine and they they constantly sing praises about American democracy, obviously ignoring things like gerrymandering and ignoring how the Electoral College puts an extreme amount of power in the hands of rich white Americans at the expense of everybody else. All while Republicans ridiculously and falsely claim that our elections are rigged against them. Now the irony is that these Republicans can't even keep up with the claims that they have made in the past and that their past fear mongering is coming back to bite them, where their own voters are starting to not believe the Republicans, whenever Democrats are winning some elections, the Republican voters are lashing out at their own governors and secretaries of state for not doing more to stop Democrats from winning elections, because in their mind, it's all this fraudulent thing. When the actuality is, is Republicans have been pulling a lot of levers to make sure that the odds have been rigged in their favor for a very long time. This is a simple case of Brian Kemp reaping exactly what he has sowed. And that, on some level, is funny. What's not funny is the reality that because of these systems still being in place and because of the extreme bias in our electoral system, the next several years don't look like they're going to do good for Democrats. They don't look like they're going to do good for the American people. And it really seems like the United States is rocketing towards more extreme voter suppression and as a result, more extreme oppression of marginalized communities. Because at this point, the Republican Party seems very determined to secure permanent minority rule where rich white folks are determining policy and everybody else has structural barriers that prevent them from getting access to the ballot box or that prevent their representation. Because if the United States was really a democratic country, if we really had a true democracy here, we would already have incredibly popular things like student debt forgiveness, like universal health care, maybe even a universal basic income. But instead of getting anything like that, all we're getting is tax breaks for rich people and corporate bailouts. This is Ben Corolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to stay up to date with my content, you can follow me at Benjamin Corolla on Twitter. And for those of you that might be wondering or have noticed, my pronouns are in fact she, her.